Now, I do want to emphasize, this isn't the first Starbuck game I've ever seen. Um, I have toyed around with this. I played, I, I'd say, about 11 games-ish myself. Nothing too insane, nothing too crazy. Um, but yes, this will be the first one we've cast, and we'll see how this goes. Oh, Atrioke, don't say that in chat. Zombie Grub doesn't have the drive Rifkin has, it seems. It's more like Zombie Grub doesn't have the free time Rifkin has. She's at, She's got school, she's got a real job. Guys, if she comes on, I will absolutely grab Zombie Grub for you. Um, I forgot to ask if this was best of... Okay, thank you, Renzen, for asking me. <laughs> I was going to ask what this was a best of, but for now, let's get into the player introductions. Spawning on the top left corner of the map. He is, from my insanity, the Purple Protoss, Jade. And yeah, he's right about that. Most, like, 99% of the cups they do, unless it's like WCS, are best of one until the quarterfinals. So, it wouldn't be wrong to assume that. His opponent, though, in the top right! From War Legend, the Orange Zerg Renzen. Now, there are a couple things worth noting here for Starbow. I'm going to give you guys the very basics of basics as far as StarCraft 2 goes, alright? So, number one, like, because some of, I'm assuming a lot of you haven't played this game or watched it avidly or know exactly what is up. Um, you mine minerals at a much faster rate. In fact, it's almost like mining gold minerals. It's about eight per trip. And I think the uh, gas is the same at about eight per trip. I uh, Maybe those numbers are wrong, I don't know. But significantly more than the five and three you get in regular StarCraft 2. Uh, so it's kind of cool, like, you get minerals faster to the point where you don't have to worry about having the six saturation in order to sustain the game. Uh, the maps, of course, have a lot tighter chokes, and the number one big thing, guys, especially, this is important because we have a Protoss player, is Force Fields were taken out of the game. Now you might be like, hold on, well actually, not just Force Fields, but Warp Tech is much later too, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, because there's not a lot of theorizing about the game right now. There's no meta game. There's not a lot of, like, standard versus off-kilter builds. Um, but tech has changed a little bit for most races. Now, Zerg is definitely the one I'm the least comfortable, less least familiar with. I'm not gonna lie, I played random when I tested these maps out. I got Terran and Protoss, like, five times each. Uh, Protoss has some pretty cool tech things. Worth noting here on the Nexus, you'll notice there is no energy bar because you don't start off with the ability to Chrono Boost. That actually gets researched after you build your first Warp Gate. And uh, Warp Gate, as I mentioned earlier briefly, does not actually have a tech, like, uh, or a Warp Tech immediately available through the Cyber Core. You actually have to, like, um, way, way later add that on. Now, we do look like... <laughs> I, I don't know if Jade's really going to try and go for a cannon rush. I think he's just trying to fake his opponent out. It looks like, yeah, that's going to be the case. Uh, but the Chrono Boost and Forge First is something I want to talk about. So, cannons... This is going to sound really weird. You can, you can chrono boost a cannon that's already built. Now you might think, well what good is that? It's already built, it doesn't produce units, what does that benefit? It actually makes the cannon attack faster. Like there's a lot of really cool subtle things that they took and added and tweaked with and I have no idea if this game's balanced. Hell, it's probably not. Uh, but for Protoss, the reason I'm putting a lot of emphasis on this by the way is because Zerk really didn't change a whole lot. Uh, the, the basics are still there with a couple new units filtered in, uh, new spells through the Defiler or old spells depending on your point of view. But Protoss really had a huge rework for Starbo. Now one of the other things I was going to talk about is the cool the cool little tech advantages they get. Now what we have here is the Catrian Crystal coming down. This is what's going to allow the Nexuses to do the uh, the Chrono Boost that we're all used to and comfortable with with StarCraft 2. Do I have music on? Okay I do, it's just really quiet. Uh, but also a second ability is added to this where you can actually not just chrono boost But you can kind of do like a mothership core recall you target five units and bring it back to your nexus uh, And as you can see by the way physically adds on the upgrade. How cool is that? I mean the nexus looks stupid as hell and goofy, but still pretty darn cool uh, Third base coming out of Renzin like I said, the basics of StarCraft 2 are still here. So Zerg player, you need lots of hatcheries. Larva and Jex were changed, but if you got extra hatcheries, it helps make up that difference. And we currently see that going on right now in the hatchery. So what the inject, uh, oh god, queens, oh fuck, I forget, they get so many different things. Queens, do not attack anymore, guys. They do not have, well, no, I take that back. They do not have an auto attack anymore. You have to unactivate it. And something you see here in the top left is a Dragoon building. Whoa, what's that? I'll talk about that more in a second. There's so much to talk about. But as far as inject larva goes, you could read the quick tooltip if you want, but the TLDR is, uh, it just speeds up the production of things. It, it doesn't, like, pop out three brand new larva like you know injects to do. It is different. Uh, where did that Dragoon go? So, 
for the Dragoon guys, you might be wondering, like, why did this unit take the place of the Stalker? Well, it hits for 20 damage. The Stalker hits for significantly less, and I believe, I could be mistaken, I think it no longer hits twice. But Stalkers still have Blink, they still have Mobility, and they've been reclassified as, like, quote-unquote support units for Starbow. Whether that's going to be the case, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Again, a lot of the game kind of gets uh, meta-shifted around when you change these things, but one thing is for sure, Dragoons pack a punch, and they've got a lot of health and a lot of shields to boot on top of this. Zealots really didn't change much, still kind of that beefy strong unit, gets a lot of melee done. Uh, plus one on the way here for Jade, so he can certainly try and treat this like a timing attack, <laughs> as per regular StarCraft. But anyways, Queen's still spreading creep tumors, and... Uh, there you go, that's what it is. Enrage allows the queen to actually attack. Uh, it doesn't do a ton of damage. It's kind of like the old queen, it's just not automatic. There is no more, like, uh, Mothership Core, or Photon Overcharge, or that sort of stuff for the Nexus either, guys. Protoss now have to rely a lot more on units than... Uh, again, this is the race that has changed the most. Nice surround on this Dragoon, though. We'll take it down right away, and that's a huge chunk of damage uh, immediately removed from the fight. Now you might wonder, what was that? What happened? How did that other Zealot die so quickly? I believe he recalled it. Yeah. So he did try to recall the units. Why did my laptop just blue screen on me? Okay, I'm closing that, sorry. Uh, but okay, so new units come out of the Stargates. I wish I could show you the build tech thing. I can't do that because of the game hard overlay, but uh, we'll talk about them as they come out. Uh, Nubatized Carapace coming out for the Overlords here. Going to make them move faster. And of course, Metal Ball Boost did just finish up for these Lings. Got to plug that wall though, Jade. Has to be careful. There might be a cannon here. He's got to overcharge this, or sorry, uh, Chrono Boost if he wants to get some damage done. But now links flooding into the main are going to be a small bit of a problem. And again, guys, no warp tech immediately available means he has to build units and chrono them out. Now you might be like, wow, this is such a big disadvantage for Protoss. You will notice the chrono boost is making this gateway move like it's on crack. It gets huge benefits on gateways opposed to like a Stargate. Uh, it looks like Zealots will barely hold the line and that little bit of a speed boost is going to be a nice kicker here. Uh, so Zealots no longer have charge either. So I'm, gonna, I'm trying to cover the bases for people who have never seen Starbro before. There's certainly some elements we're going to take for granted. One of them you'll notice here is these zealots that move like they're on crack. They've taken some sort of stem pack. And uh, that is the upgrade they get in lieu of charge. Roaches look a little bit different, but they haven't changed too much in their essence. Um, they look more like the primal roaches, which is kind of neat. But they get this, uh, you know, the tunneling upgrades, uh, the, uh, what, what we're used to already seeing from them. So they're really not that much uh, different of a unit physically. Or, I guess... Design-wise, uh, looks like we might have some storm drops coming out of Jade, though, which could be pretty cool if that ends up happening. Uh, but there's a, there's one unit in particular I have found to be the most interesting, in my opinion. Uh, you know, there's Reavers, there's, there's Warp Prisms, whatever. Okay, great, fantastic. I really like the Sentinel. I think it's called the Sentinel? I really like the Sentinel, if that's what it's called, that comes out of the Stargate. It is this unit that's kind of replaced the Oracle. It provides detection. It does this cool little pseudo-attack. Like, it's, it's a neat little unit. And, of course, they brought back Arbiters, too, in a big way. Uh, Zerg, of course, have regained Lurkers, which are a huge deal. You'll see those get used, I'm sure, at some point this game. Uh, but Zealots will try and hold the line here. And uh, Roaches, man. Roaches hit for a truckload here. But as we can see, fighting on a choke against ranged units is never something you necessarily want to do as a Protoss. Uh, it does throw down a storm, and now the Roaches out in the open are a much better place for Jade to engage in. And you'll notice there's no warp is coming because it's not available. So, unfortunately, he has to push this back with just his gateway units for the time being. Another Templar here going to try and get a storm off, but uh, young Jade has transformed his warp prism. Now warp tech kicks in, but there's a big downside to warp tech, guys. Uh, first off, it takes much longer to come in, but also, more importantly, it puts a longer cooldown than if you were actually building a unit with a chrono boost. But it transports it across the map. It saves you that time, and these Zellas... Oh god, these zealots are trying to hold the line. It's like a tug of war over here on this side of the map, and this third base is certainly being the uh, the point of contest. Roaches with that sick bro moves so fast to get right on top of those Templar. More zealots are being warped in, and ah, uh, the problem with this is we don't see Jade really gaining any ground. Renzen's constantly resupplying and sending these roaches forward. And uh, unfortunately, as good as zealots aren't, as great as they are connecting this, looks like a couple probes are forced to be pulled here ultimately in the end. Uh, ro you know, some units have different attack animations now, by the way. Uh, Vikings, in my opinion, have like the coolest new attack animation, but uh, we're not going to get to see them in this game. But Roaches are a great display of what else has changed. A bit of fire and brimstone coming out of them. Hydralisks have changed in essence as well. Uh, looks like this Nexus will end up falling here. 
<laughs> didn't even know Roaches were in the game. Uh, anyways, Hydralis are something I want to talk about. If there's more Dragoons available, we'd probably see Hydralis instead of Roaches, because uh, for those who do not know, Hydralis do like what is classified as explosive damage, where just bonus versus armored, but this Roach Burrow is a little bit too good for our poor My Insanity player struggling to hold on here. A great choke is set up, but no availabilities for Storms, and Warp Tech is just not paying out for him. Uh, looks like the cannon will fall, and this is looking to be a lot of trouble. The Archon's on the way, but the Archon has not changed much either. It doesn't have an I win button attached to it. Lots of damage gets done, and looks like some Dragoons now going to get involved with the fight. These guys do hit significantly harder than Zealots. And, of course, they can try and kite just a tad. These are the units that Jade, unfortunately, needed a lot earlier, but didn't get until just now. A couple roaches do make it past the army. Go for towards the mineral line. Sniping off some workers here will be a really great benefit here for a Zerg player. So many workers have already fallen. The 31 are dead, and these Dragoons are trying desperately to hold the line. Uh, it is, of course, level 2 upgrades versus 1-1, one, one, but even then, these are not immortals by any means. Still hitting for quite a wallop in the Burrow tech. Man, I gotta give it to our, our, our what's it, Ward Legends, our orange Zerg player, Renzen here. He's using Burrow tech to great effect. And you'll notice there's a bit of a timer on the Burrow when he does Burrow. You cannot Burrow infinitely with these. Uh, they're, they're forced sort of on a clock for how long they can travel for. But that uh, natural base has fallen, and this is starting to look worse and worse for our My Insanity player. Hopefully he can hold on to the lines, though. Dragoons, like I said, are pretty darn good. Roach is trying to get underneath them for a bit of a shark attack move. Half the warp gates are, of course, not transformed, and that's perfectly fine. Warping in some zealous, but its economy is in the gutters right now, guys. Resources lost are not looking too much better. Doing what he can, but Renson just has this constant flood of units coming at him. There's no holding up with this guy. He is relentless. And uh, looks like with the final probes going down, this is really going to cut into the economy of our Protoss player. And this might just be game, folks. Roach Bro is just being used to such extent. You really love seeing this guy use it up. No Reavers were ever made this game, sadly. I was kind of really hoping they would eventually come out. They would have paid off really nicely against uh, what is... Well, what is especially against these links, but uh, roaches don't even get cleaned up. Good game is called. Thank you, Jade, for playing in the first ever Starbo tournament, but also the first ever casted Starbo game on Base Straight TV. You will not be forgotten. These units never die. It feels that way, Big Handies. It feels that way, but of course, uh, you just need the right units to deal with them. Alright, let's check the...